The Cambrian explosion is an event in biological history where, for reasons that we can only speculate about today, there are suddenly came to be an enormous amount of new life forms, and the formation of most major phyla still use in taxonomy to this day. What's that have to do with anything? Well, the point I'm actually trying to make here is that we fanatics of monster games are experiencing our own sort of Cambrian explosion. Despite supposed extinction events like the Indie Apocalypse, which never happened, threats of recessions, or hypothetical market saturation, we're now seeing wave after wave of new and creative monster game ideas coming to life every single day. While always having been alive and diverse in Japan, we here in the English-speaking world suffered a bit of a boom and bust when it comes to monster games at the tail end of the 90s, and it wasn't until some time later, due to the proliferation of indie devs who grew up with the games of the time, who considered them thoughtfully and said, I can do that too. So today, we're going to be looking at a fun bit of indie excellence, and while it may look derivative, you might find yourself charmed by the game's simple but addictive and intuitive gameplay, so be sure that you watch all the way through to really get a feel for what we're talking about here. What? Who's this we I keep referencing? Well, today, I am very pleased to have our first crossover event. Allow me the pleasure of introducing to you Gym Leader Ed, who is here to lend a hand because I don't have any. Hey, what's going on, guys? Happy to come hang out here on Snack's channel as we provide you with some spicy monster taming content. Now, for those of you who have been lucky enough not to know me, my channel chiefly focuses on the ever-growing monster taming genre that is currently striving to make its way to the mainstream. Games like Nexomon Extinction have aided in creating more widespread appeal for this category of game, so it makes for a great introduction to the monster taming scene outside of the mainstream Pokemon series. So the two of us today will be teaming up to talk about this incredible monster taming game. And who knows, we might even argue for your entertainment today. Let's find out. Join us for a closer look at Nexomon Extinction. Greetings, everyone. This is the Hipster Snack, and today my good friend Gym Leader Ed and I will be looking at the indie mods game Nexomon Extinction. Brought to Steam, Nintendo Switch, Xbox One, and PS4 stores late 2020, this game serves as both a direct sequel to the original Nexomon and is a mods game more than capable of standing on its own two feet. Yes, Nexomon Extinction is the sequel to Nexomon 1, a game which originally came to mobile and is now also out on Steam. Nexomon 1 was also a spiritual successor to another mobile title named Micromon, but perhaps that's a topic for another video. That said, Nexomon Extinction by no means requires any knowledge from the previous installment. As Snack has stated, the game is a standalone product. Nexomon and Micromon references are indeed within the game, and it does act as a direct sequel to Nexomon 1. However, it's been 1,000 years since the original title, and most of the characters are no longer around. Thus, you'll get enough information in-game to fill in any gaps. The plot of Nexomon Extinction revolves around you, a 15-year-old orphan, alongside your cat companion Coco, as you traverse a very dangerous and hostile world overrun by Tyrant Nexomon, whom are fighting for the title of King of Nexomon. This has been ongoing ever since the defeat of Omnicron, the previous King of Nexomon, during the events of Nexomon 1. The prologue itself even states that the idea of humans and Nexomon living in harmony over the years is nothing more than a false notion and the perception of those foolish and uneducated. Beyond all of the funny moments, colorful art style, and badass Nexomon, this story definitely has its darker undertones, and basically what you have to do as the player is work your way up through the Nexomon ranks and ultimately end the Nexomon war, which is putting humanity and Nexomon alike on the brink of extinction. Graphically, the game is quite good. It's very bright and vibrant. The presentation maintains a less-is-more mentality, likely a holdover from the aesthetic of the first game, which was originally launched as a mobile title. And while the shading is relatively simple, it makes up for it by keeping everything as sharp and distinct as possible. The overworld is reminiscent of RPG Maker, but I don't say that in a bad way, just that it maintains a simple and easy-to-understand layout at all times. Characters mostly convey emotions via emoticons, and in some cases, portrait art. Chief among them, Coco, a strange... cat... person... who likes to break the fourth wall. Hey, Dutaku, is this guy a relative of yours? Oh. And, neat little aside, you can pick your look from your menu at any time you're not in battle. Nice touch. And I simply adore the Nexomon designs themselves, as they are the main attraction after all. The Nexomon has smooth, fluid animations, mostly for pleasant looping idle animations and simple attack animations that resolve lightning fast. 
Not only does it make it so my refrigerator can run this game with zero issues, it also means the overall pace of the battles you engage in stays consistently brisk. I do agree with Snack here that the graphics are solid. To me, it looks like what the natural progression of the fifth generation of Pokemon would be if they stayed 2D instead of going up to 3D. We have these really nice non-pixel models that are animated for battle and for the most part have no issues outside of one stutter that seems to appear the first time you attack during a combat sequence when you boot up the game. Audio-wise, I don't have too, too much to comment on. The sound effects are serviceable and never bothered me. Of note, though, is the soundtrack, which I quite like. Primarily composed of piano-led melodies that set the mood quite nicely. Special shout-out to the Tamer vs. Tamer battle theme for the favorite track of the OST. Gameplay-wise, it's, well, it's an SMT formula, but simpler. To start, you, well, select a starter. From quite a collection of options at that. I chose the Electric Gekko because it seems kind of snackish. Which one was yours, Zed? I personally chose Trebly because, I mean, who doesn't like a damn dino? Gekoko was actually the one starter that I caught and kept on my team as well because, first of all, he looks awesome, and secondly, he's broken. I did a whole video on that one. Anyways, the battle system to me does play a lot like Pokemon, with some notable caveats including the lack of a special defense and special attack, and the speed stat whilst existing being far less integral during play. This is because each move has its own speed, so you're really only making a difference with that stat when you have speed ties. I will say that if you were looking for something really complex in terms of battling, this game might probably not be for you, since it unfortunately is indeed very simplistic. Most Nexomon only learn moves of their own typing outside of normal type attacks, and the stamina system, while not terribly implemented by any means, still does get annoying at times when you're low, given that resting only gives you about 10 to 15 stamina. There are also no traits, and held items do exist, but they're these very basic cores, which boost stats by a certain amount. Right. You make a team out of six of the game's collectible critters of your choice, each armed with four moves at their disposal. However, anytime you're not in battle, you're free to shuffle these attacks around between any the Nexamon have learned up to that point, allowing you full options and customization. The game's collection of critters each have a singular elemental typing to call their own out of nine available sorts. Normal, fire, water, earth, Wind, Lightning, Plant, Psychic, and Ghost. Each typing is strong against two or three others in a rather laudable effort to maintain a strong sense of competitive balance between each. That being said, if I were to issue complaint, and I must because I'm a contrarian at heart, it's that it is pretty grindy. I know Mon's games lean in that direction, but since you'll always want to be pressing forward, you will be grinding a lot. And yes, there is an item that eventually distributes XP to Nexomon who weren't in battle, but you'll be a ways into the story campaign before you get your hands on it. But I suppose I can only complain so much. Nexomon Extinction has no means of interconnectivity, and thus you cannot trade Nexomon with other players. Thus, Nexomon Extinction is specifically designed so that every Nexomon is collectible within a single save file, hence the introduction of the game's very honest rarity rankings. All monsters are ranked as common, uncommon, rare, super rare, ultra rare, mega rare, or special. While in some cases this can be an indication of overall power, it isn't always, and you can very well clear the game using nothing but commons and uncommons should you want to do so. And because there's no telling where these will actually show up, this means that grinding and finding more and better Nexomon go hand in hand. It's actually a very elegant solution to the problem, and it incentivizes you to continue growing stronger. Nexomon Extinction's plot is where the game excels in my opinion, and this is a true reason why you'd want to buy and enjoy the game. The battling, while lacking any major depth, is outweighed by the story, which is actually one of the most enjoyable, entertaining, and interesting I've seen in the entire monster taming genre in quite some time. It's not revolutionary by any means, however, Nexomon's plot isn't afraid of taking risks, and instead of having you collect badges and maybe sometimes deal with bad people, Nexomon Extinction is heavily story-driven, with you traveling from place to place due to a narrative reason, rather than, oh, it's just the next place in line. The game does actually have an open world as well, so you can travel around and explore at your own pace with enemy monsters scaling to your story progression, so that's pretty great as well. I don't want to spoil too much, but the story in and of itself contains a very self-aware humor, an interesting and honestly memorable cast of characters, and themes including coming of age, the end justifies the means, and a touch of utilitarian pros and cons sprinkled in. But all that being said, I find Nexomon Extinction a seriously solid title. While the creators could have cheaped out and released a simple clone with no real effort on their part, that's not what they did. 
There's a lot of love poured into the world of Nexomon, and it shows. The monsters are great, the balancing is deliberate, the writing is charming and often humorous, with gags and fourth wall breaks aplenty. It's rare and delightful to find a game with this much personality to its name. I totally agree with you, Snack. This game feels extremely inspired and has a level of world building which I rarely see within games in general, let alone the monster taming genre. I honestly can't recommend this game enough to anyone looking for a fun Pokemon alternative or perhaps something to tie you over until the next release. Either way, Nexomon Extinction stands tall and proud of what it is and tries to be. So you heard it here, folks. Pick it up for yourselves on consoles or PC today. Link, as always, in the description. It's a truly wonderful experience, and you won't go wrong if you already love monster games. And I want to take this moment out to extend a very special thanks to Gym Leader Ed for joining me here today. Take a bow, buddy. Thanks a lot for having me, man, and definitely stay tuned as I do have a video planned with Snack going over a classic monster taming title in the form of Dragon Warrior Monsters. And this has been the Tamer Snack. Yes, I've used it before, and I don't care. If you liked today's episode, be sure to tap the like button so we know. For more from me, you can even hit the subscribe and bell icons too, so you'll see more obscure reviews, indie excellence, snack tech, and more. And if you want more from Gym Leader Ed, the link to his channel is listed in the description below, and you should definitely subscribe to him as well. His content is absolutely phenomenal, absolutely worth following, and I would know since I follow him myself. Leave a comment down below if you liked our first crossover episode, and tell us a bit about your own Nexomon team. We'd love to hear it. But continue to join me here on Channel Snack each week, and I will see you there.